All right, we have done all of the projects this semester that I am grading. We have learned how to play with compositing other people's pixels. We've learned how to use vector shapes, layer them up. We've learned how to create landscapes, creatures. We've played with animating and time-based design. We've looked at outside digital disciplines. We found our own artists to highlight in our presentations. We've done type design. We've done poster layout. We've done original spot illustrations with digital coloring. And we just finished doing digital painting, getting introduced to that technique where you have full control of every pixel, which is by far the most individual project we do so far in the semester because everything you choose is fully under your control instead of based on what the a procedure is or how the tool is meant to be used. So now we are ready for a project that is graded by critique. And this is called a full concept project. Full concept means that every decision you make for it comes from your idea. And a good idea, a good decision supports the idea, right? So if you're gonna, what digital art technique should you use? Should it be in color? Should it be a series? Should it be just one piece? Should it have text? Should it be a weird shape? Should it just be a regular rectangle? All of that should be based on what your idea is and what best serves it. So everything goes back to the concept. You can use any digital techniques you want. You can even use traditional techniques as long as digital is part of the process and a big part of the process, right? So for instance, you could sketch something out traditionally, scan it in, finish it off digitally. It can be time-based. You can make it an animation. You can make it a screen presentation. I've even had students incorporate sound and other digital aspects, right? As long as digital art techniques are at the core of it. It is a blank slate. Just do something great, right? Except that I'm gonna give you a theme to respond to. And we're gonna learn this, this process for how to build your idea and strengthen your idea. And that's gonna involve some critiques with me. So we're gonna learn the full concept process and we're gonna do this through proving ground number four. In between this intro page to this module for our final project and proving ground number four, you have an interim self-assessment. That's just the final kind of questions I want you to answer about your experience in the course and you get credit for that. And then we move to this proving ground. And this is what we'll start to have deliverables for by next class, by Wednesday's class. So in order to define your problem, that's step one, each of you has to give yourself your own assignment. I could make this totally open-ended, and I have done that in the past with uneven results, because if I just say, do whatever you want, but make it great, and other students are going to grade you, students will spend a long time in paralysis not knowing what to do, like staring at the empty page. So instead, I am not acting as your judge here or your scorer, but I am acting as the curator of this final project. So as the curator, I'm going to give you a theme. And it's only, it's unique only for this section this semester. And the theme is found under assignments. And you just scroll down. And I just wanted a phrase for the homepage in assignments that could be pushed in a lot of different directions. So the name of our group show will be this theme. And it is, this too shall pass art to combat doomerism. You can take that any way you want. Exactly. So let's pretend that this, these are artworks submitted by students for this theme. This too shall pass art to combat doomerism. And some of these are student artworks from past classes. Some of these are professional artworks like Barbara Kluger. Some of them are contemporary artworks by professionals. And what you'll see in each of them is none of them really share a technique. They all use digital. 
but they're about very, very different things. So the first key in defining your problem and how you're going to make something for this curated show, This Too Shall Pass, Art to Combat Humorism, is to help define terms for yourself. You have to define the problem for yourself. So that leads us to, to zero step, right? I gave you a piece of paper. You should have something to write with. I want you to write a one-sentence statement summary to summarize your idea. It might take you a little bit of thinking. We'll have about 20 minutes for this to get to there. But what is a statement summary? This is good for any creative endeavor. It's where you just give yourself your job, right? So if I'm hired to do a logo for a dog walking company, saying my problem is make a logo for a dog walking company doesn't give me enough. So instead, what's the problem? What makes that unique to me? Why do I want to do this job? What can I contribute? So my problem would be I want to make a logo for a dog walking company that makes the dog dynamic as though it's from 1920s futurism. And I'm going to focus more on the walking than the dog. So I want movement to be key. And you try to put that all in one sentence. So now my challenge is not just making a dog walking logo, but making a logo that's about the movement of walking beyond anything else. And that gets me thinking, OK, that's an interesting problem to, to try to solve. And all you have to do is kind of write down your intention. So it will strengthen any creative pursuit you do to kind of state that intention. You're creating your problem. So how are you going to interpret this? This too shall pass. Art to combat doomerism. Doomerism is a new term. So you might research it, right? What is a doomer? This hasn't even made it into, you know, Webster's word of the year. But it's kind of a phenomenon. And you might agree with some of these things. What makes someone a doomer? Doomer and by extension doomerism are terms which arose primarily on the internet to describe people who are extremely pessimistic or fatalistic about global problems such as overpopulation, peak oil, climate change, and pollution. I was very worried about overpopulation for a while as a teenager. So. Yeah, so as you just see terms, right? These are not objective things. <laughs> so when you see art to combat doomerism, you want to define that for yourself. And you might have a sarcastic take on it. You might have a very uh, adversarial take on it, right? Like it's just an uninformed view that's out there. And so you want to combat that with information. You can just go lots of different ways. Now, that's just the second part, right? And that makes it contemporary to this moment. But this idea of this too shall pass, this is a very, very common phrase in lots and lots of cultural traditions. It comes from all of the different uh, written religious traditions that the moment isn't permanent, right? This is restated in therapy in all kinds of different ways. No feeling is final. All these different aspects. So this is the broader statement. This too shall pass. Art to combat doomerism. What does that mean to you? Okay, so this is how you're going to go through these steps. Just because I'm going to do this video to kind of show you everything. That first step is defining your problem with a sentence summary. Once you have that, you need to come up with at least three thumbnail sketches. That will showcase it, right? So this example, which is in the assignment, could work for this theme, even though it wasn't created with this theme. So really, your statement should be something that you would want to do anyway. This just kind of focuses your attention on it, right? That will fit under that umbrella term of this too shall pass, art to combat doomerism. So the way that this student that I'm using this example from, with his permission, is his sentence was, I will use the familiar imagery of memes and cancel culture to satirize our society's need to politicize every bleeping thing, no matter how obvious or important. What I love about that summary statement 
is there's already some emotion in it. <laughs> you know, like the student has an interest in it, whether it's comedic, whether it's anger, whether it's frustration. Um, and it also shows a little bit of that student's taste and already embeds like what influences what this student wants to make art about, right? Whether it's meme culture or all the comments that are on the internet. Right? And you don't need to make this about the internet at all. There's lots of things to comment on in our contemporary lives. But doomerism is a contemporary kind of internet term. So the culture that is going on right now that is aware of things and has all the problems of all of our shared communication. Step one, once you've written down your statement, and I'll be looking at those with you, is you're going to do these thumbnails. Now these thumbnails are different approaches that that make your idea clear in a visual sense. And your brainstorming is not actually supposed to try to get a brilliant idea. It's actually supposed to just acknowledge what would work. So the first thing you do is write what, or write and sketch, so you can do kind of word clouds as well, what obvious imagery occurs to you immediately for your idea. So for the dog walking logo, I immediately think of this futurist painting. I think it's by Bella. Dear to me, Bella. Yeah, dyna, dynamism of dog on a leash. Giacomo Bella. And I think of that. So that's the cliche of a dog in the motion of walking. And I could turn that into a logo. But that doesn't mean that's the best solution. But that might be my brainstorm number one. Does that make sense? I might do a little sketch of how I would render that. So you want to acknowledge where your ideas come from. And so in this example, he did it by sketching out kind of his modifications of these different memes. Some are art historical. Some are even internet historical, like I can has cheeseburgers, very early um, meme site. Some were more specific to the moment. Okay, then you're going to bring those in next class. We're going to really work on, on getting that, getting a statement summary and getting, getting three thumbnails because then you're going to critique just with me one-on-one. -on -one. And in our critique, we're going to figure out what is the strongest approach that you have the most passion for and that you can refine into something better. And then we're going to talk about what different references you need. Because the next step is to gather and research, collecting info to support your idea. And then from that, you're going to make a refined sketch. And then you're ready for your second critique. And your second critique is going to be about figuring out what digital technique can help with your idea. Right? So nothing is even digital between now and next class. Digital art only comes into it once we're figuring out how to finish off your idea. You can sketch digitally, that's fine. But I don't want you thinking from the beginning, oh, this needs to be vectored, or this needs to be a composite. I want you just thinking of what is the, the thing you want to communicate. So then, after you have your refined sketch, we're going to figure out how you use the programs that we've learned to get to the best physical product for our final class period. And then you're going to be thinking about things like the size, the presentation, and your artist statement. And each of you will write no more than one page an artist statement that explains your idea to your audience, just like a museum would have a little tag next to it. So this became the finished project for this student. And then the artist statement, this is by Garrison. Uh, the title is Karen versus the Masks of Tyranny. And I wanted my artwork to poke fun at the ignorance and prevalence of anti-mask and COVID denying sentiment that is running rampant on social media. To do this, I mash up the butterfly meme elements. So what is the butterfly meme? If you don't know it, you don't need to know it, but this was how we got there. It came right from one of his initial thumbnails, right? And then combining it with some of these other things, came up with something original. 